Good evening. For the first time in 18 years, Singaporeans will get to vote for their next head of state. Now, tonight we'll present to you the four presidential candidates on television together for the first time and ask them to tell you why you should vote for them on the 27th of August. Joining me in studio are Professor Tommy Koh, who's well known not only to Singaporeans, but in the worldwide diplomatic circuit, and Mr. Janadas Devon, veteran journalist, editor and thinker. Now, let's meet the candidates. Tell me, welcome to the program. For the first question, each candidate gets one minute to explain to Singaporeans why they want to be president. Now, let's start with Dr. Tan ching -bok. Dr. Tan, your time starts now. Good evening, Singaporeans. I want to be your candidate because I saw a divide during the last general elections. This political divide is not good for our country because it tears us apart. I will try to heal this divide. The other reason why I wanted to enter this election is because I want to make sure that Singaporeans are given a chance to vote for the president. For too long, we have no chance. Singaporeans have no chance to vote for the president. So this is a chance for them to exercise the vote, to give a, a good mandate for the president. Lastly, I want to promote multiracialism in Singapore, which is the cornerstone of our society. Thank you very much, Dr. Tan. All right, Mr. Tan Ji Say, your time begins now. Good evening, my fellow Singaporeans. The mission of the elected president is to provide checks and balances on the government. Only a person who is independent of the ruling party can have the moral authority to perform this role. I have never been a member of the ruling party, so I do not have any emotional ties or baggage to carry. I can be objective. I can raise questions without restraint. And I can... The, the people have already voted for the government that they want. Now is the time for the people to vote for the checks and balances that they need to make Singapore a better place to live for all. Thank you very much, Mr. Tan Jisei. Dr. Tony Tan, your time begins now. My fellow Singaporeans, I'm running for the presidency because I believe that in these uncertain times, Singapore needs a president with a steady hand, deep knowledge of the complexities which, and the challenges which, lie, which face Singapore ahead. The global economy is in bad shape. America is in trouble. Europe is in crisis. I have a unique blend of experience in both the public and private sector which I can bring to the presidency. I also have deep knowledge of the international financial system and global diplomacy. And these are areas which I can make a contribution in working with the government, all political parties and civil society to heal divisions, bring Singaporeans together so that we can overcome this crisis. I hope that Singaporeans will give me the opportunity to serve them again. Thank you very much, Dr. Tony Tan. Mr. Tan Kin Lian, your time begins now. My dear Singaporeans, I want to make life better for all Singaporeans. I will be your, the voice of the people to bring your concerns and aspirations to the government and to work constructively with the government to find solutions that are best for you. I will act independently of the government in the duties of the president as a, a check and balance against abuse of power and corruption. I bring to this office my personal values of honesty, fairness, courage, positive attitude and public service. I hope uh, you will give me your support and uh, together let us make a better future for all Singaporeans. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Tan Klinian. Gentlemen, can I please invite you to take your seats? Thank you. Okay, I'd like to invite Professor Tommy Koh to ask the first question. Thank you, Deborah. Um, my question is to all the candidates, and it is, how will you use the moral authority of the office of the president to build a better Singapore? Well, the, really, the role is to, there are two basic uh, functions. That is to perform the, to use the veto powers over five specified areas. I will just concentrate on two because they affect the daily lives more often. And that is the national reserves as well as the appointment of key, key appointments in the, in the government. The first one on national reserves, I will, well, it is to prevent a, a rook government from raiding the reserves. But I will not be obstructive. That means that you do not want the government to dip into it, even though it is very necessary. So I will, in view of the, uh, the economic climate, I will be supportive of the government in using the reserves for economic de development to, to overcome the economic difficulties in the future. The second one is key appointments. I will, in, I will institute a system of close scrutiny for everybody, including reappointments, so as to ensure integrity and uh, integrity and independence of key state organs of the civil service, of the judiciary, and of investment agencies. So these are the two areas. But the other area on moral authority is actually the moral power that the government, that the president can exercise. And he, the moral power really is the unifying role of the president. And we have a very divided society right now. And society is divided not by race, religion, or, uh, yeah, but it's divided more by economic division, okay. Mr. economic Tan, sorry, policies. I have to interrupt you there. Okay. We all have one and a half minutes here in this segment. So perhaps the next question. Dr. Tony, Dr. Tony Tan. Tan. Um, the president is the head of state of our country. He is not a second power center. But by virtue of his office, the president has influence. And he can use this influence in order to pro promote a range of causes in Singapore. For example, he can advocate uh, the encouragement of charitable causes to help a number of people, a number of causes, both large needs and also spe uh, specific needs. Another way, of course, which the president can actually do is to encourage a more vibrant, uh, entrepreneurial, creative environment in Singapore we have many young people here who are extremely talented, who feel passionately about causes. I met with some of them last week, uh, who are involved in social, uh, various types of social enterprises. I think it's wonderful that uh, these are idealistic young people, they are not cynical, they feel motivated to come out and make a contribution to society. I think the president can actually encourage them. Finally, the president can actually play a role to promote social harmony. Our multiracial, multicultural, multi-religious society is unique. People take it for granted. You look at other countries in the world, it's, it's not so. We must preserve this, and I will promote social harmony and community bonding very strongly as president. Thank you. Mr. Tan Lian. Now, to truly reflect the views of the people, rather than my personal views, I will form a president's personal council comprising of people from various segments of our society. This council will be backed by different panels of experts and they will keep in touch with the people to find the most important issues affecting Singaporeans. Their concerns and aspirations will be raised with the government in the spirit of understanding the problem and how to come up with solutions that are in the best interest of all Singaporeans. I believe this approach will be welcomed by the government as it will help to rebuild the trust of the people in the government. I firmly believe that the important issues should not be seen as pro-government or anti-government. 
a good president elected by the people should be non-partisan and have the courage to use his moral authority to make life better for Singaporeans. Before I approve the release of past reserves, I want to make sure that the money will be put to good use and will benefit not only businesses, but the people as well. For senior appointments, I will have a personal discussion with the candidates to check on their values. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Dr. Tan Ching Bok. Thank you. I think I would like to use my office as the elected president to heal this divide that's taking place among the political parties. Because the EP is the neutral head of state, so it can create occasions to reduce this hostility and this suspicion. I, on this, I would like to create occasions, venues and events for leaders of different political parties to come together and, and have whole discussions and find common grounds and see whether they can all think Singaporeans first. I think Singaporeans should be able to see that a political debate can always occur without any hostility. Also, there are many social causes which have relevant service for the country and the elected president can help champion these causes to improve Singapore's civic uh, mindedness. I can be a bridge between active citizen group which has passion to provide such service to connect with the government. I will promote better social cohesion within many races and com our community through sports, multiracial events, cultural events and charities. And of course, I would like to continue to promote very, very strongly our multiracial uh, society. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll have to go for a short break. When we return, we'll have a moderated free flow discussion on the candidates' views on the role of the president. Stay with us. Welcome back. In this segment, we'll adopt a free flow discussion and explore issues related to the role and veto powers of the president. Now, the constitution is very clear in that the elected president has to exercise his powers only with the advice of the prime minister or cabinet. He has, however, discretionary power in eight areas. The five most important veto powers are in, firstly, safeguarding past reserves. Second, the appointment of key personnel, such as the chiefs of the armed forces and the police force and the auditor general and so on. Third, for ISA detentions. Fourth, over corruption investigations. And fifth, on the maintenance of religious harmony. We have some very specific questions in these areas here for all of you. Uh, let me throw the first question to Jan Dasua. Gentlemen, there has been controversy as to what a president can or cannot do. Article 21.1 of the Constitution states, except as provided by this Constitution, the president shall shall, not may, act in accordance with the advice of the cabinet. Would you agree this means the president should always act on the advice of the government, except where the constitution explicitly provides otherwise? Dr. Tan. In my view, the constitution is very clear. It spells out exactly what the president can and cannot do. The president has no executive power except in the five areas which are specified in the Constitution, where he is explicitly able to take initiatives, and that is why we have an election. However, this does not mean that the President has no influence. The President, by virtue of his office, has influence, which he can use in his interactions with the Prime Minister and other ministers to make suggestions, to give warnings, to be able to shape, he not so much shape government policy, but actually to give his views. It is, of course, the responsibility of the Prime Minister and the Cabinet to take executive ac uh, uh, action. But I think the President has the ability to contribute in a wide variety of ways to Singapore within the limits of the Constitution, and he has to respect the...